good to be with you today. I have been really disturbed over the last few years about how our world has continued to exist in a spiral of violence. And as I've thought about that, I, I've tried to understand why is it that we continue to find ourselves uh, at war and Occam's razor would seem to suggest that the slim, simplest answer is often correct. And I, I think it is because our default position so often is plan A. And plan A is to treat other people the way they treat us. So they attack us, we attack them. It's an eye for an eye, an ear for an ear, an arm for an arm, a leg for a leg. And it's led to ongoing violence. The 20th century was probably the most violent century in the history of humanity. More people were killed then than the whole of human history put together. In the 21st century, we see the spiral of violence roll on. And I think uh, it's time to stop that spiral of violence. And all religions seem to suggest that the only way we can do it is by scrapping plan A and trying plan B. Plan B is to be the change we want to see in the world. And if we believe in peace, then we need to be people of peace. And all major religions teach that the only way we can do that is to treat other people not as they treat us, but as we would like to be treated. Of course, all of us know that when Jesus summarised the whole of the uh, religious tradition in the biblical narrative, he said uh, we could summarise it by saying it's to love God with our whole heart and mind and soul and strength and to love our neighbour as ourselves. And I think it's time that we took Jesus seriously, <laughs> that we actually scrap plan A and stop treating people the way they treat us and started to treat people the way we would like to be treated, to not return evil for evil, but to return good for evil, like Christ did. Now, I think uh, the only way that we can do this is if we actually go back to the Sermon on the Mount and rediscover the ethic of Jesus in the Beatitudes. In the Beatitudes, Jesus says, what I want you to do if you want to be part of my blessed revolution and bring heaven on earth is to identify with the poor in spirit to enter into their pain empathically, to get angry but never get aggressive, channel the rage creatively and constructively in seeking for justice. Let your justice be freighted with mercy so that you extend the same mercy to others as you, you would want yourself. Always act with integrity, even when there's no publicity, and work for peace in the midst of war. Suffer violence but never inflict violence another, but perse uh, persevere through the persecution. Now it seems to me that the Beatitudes therefore are a simple ethical framework for us that gives us a way of being the change we want to see in the world, of treating other people the way we would like to be treated in the same circumstances. I think creeds have their value, their statements of belief, but they're limited. There's no ethical content in the creeds. I would like to see churches begin to read the Beatitudes every week. I'd like to see Christians learn the Beatitudes off by heart. I'd like to see, in fact, reconstructing church as a recovery movement where all of us get together and say, we are addicted to the dominant values of our society, to wealth and power and status and violence, but we want to be the change. And we want to learn the Beatitudes off by heart. And we want to find ways of supporting each other to help each other be the change we want to see in the world. I'd love to see the church stop preaching and start practicing what it's been preaching. My dad was a pastor who loved preaching and he came to me one day and he said, son, what do you think I should preach on next? He was so excited about the possibility of something else to preach on. And I said, dad, you know what? I think it'd be better if you stop preaching altogether. Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if our churches had a moratorium on acquiring more knowledge and just practice what we know already? What if we all took the Beatitudes and just picked a Beatitude and tried to work on it? I believe the revolution of Jesus is not quoting scriptures, but incarnating scriptures. What if we did all identify with the poor in spirit? What if we did all enter into their pain empathically and weep with those that weep? What if we all got angry about the injustice in the world but not got aggressive? What if we channeled our rage creatively into struggling for justice, a justice that treats other people with the same kind of mercy as we want? What if we all acted with integrity when there was no publicity at all? 
and that we worked for uh, peace in the midst of war and did so even when we were persecuted for it. This is the revolution of Jesus. This is what it means to be Christ-like. In my country, there's a book uh, chain called Kurong, and they say that the most stolen um, item from uh, Kurong is the What Would Jesus Do bands. Now, I think there's a nice little irony about that. But I think all of us tend to project onto Jesus what we would like him to do. Uh, the challenge is, is to be confronted with who Jesus really is. And I think in the Beatitudes, we have a framework of what it really means to be Christ-like. And I think the call for all of us Christians is to take that framework and to stare at it, to consider it, to let it settle within us and to take that as a framework for the way we engage our world. I'd like to see all of us begin to pray our alternative uh, of the serenity prayer. In AA groups for people addicted to drugs and alcohol, people pray, Lord, grant me the serenity uh, to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Well, I'd like to see us all in B groups where we're wanting to overcome our addiction to the dominant values of our society and pray this prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the people I cannot change, <laughs> the courage to change the one I am, and the wisdom to know it's me. This is the revolution of Jesus. Not that we change others or we try to change others or we force other people to become like us. But for us to open ourselves to the spirit of Jesus and be the change that Christ wants us to be in the world. Thank you very much.